Hi and welcome to this video in the QPSMR Companion Going Deeper series. And in this video, we're going to be looking at using MRDCL script and syntax to be able to get a little bit more out of QPSMR Companion. This is using some scripting language that sits underneath QPSMR Companion to allow you to do some things that perhaps the Companion can't do, or perhaps to do some things in a more efficient way. Now, if you're really interested in finding out a lot more, you're advised to have a look at our website and look at the MRDCL pages, which really goes into full detail about what you can do with a scripting language. But for this today's examples, we're going to be looking at one or two things that you can do just by using a few lines of code and perhaps to open up some ideas of where you might be able to go and perhaps do some perhaps more difficult or clever analysis and perhaps do some stuff productively. So I'm going to open up the tables file here. We've got a project that's got a number of questions and I'm going to open up a tables file. And for this video, I'm going to use a project that's already exists. So what we've got here is some fairly standard tables. So these have all been set up using the insert tables, adding a new table and dragging and dropping Q12, B, C and D for tables one, two and three. But then we come to this uh, line here and you'll see it's got some syntax sitting in it up the top there. And this is allowing you to put in some MRDCL script so that you can do things using a language which, as you'll see as we go through more examples, offers a lot more power and shortcuts than perhaps the QPSMR companion does. The problem with the script is that if you make mistakes, it's quite hard to find those mistakes. You really need a full MRDCL license if you're going to do that. But it's still an opportunity to get a little bit more out of QPSMR Companion and really should make you feel better in the sense that there's probably no table that you can't, in theory, do in the QPSMR Companion because MRDCL, the script underneath QPSMR Companion, really does do everything you might want to do when it comes to market research tables. So we look at this line of code here and you'll see that it's got some syntax. It says T hash for X bracket F equals A and ID equals dollar Q12 B star dollar region. So what does that actually mean? Well, first of all, it says this is a table. So that's what the T means. The hash means there's the table number. 4X is the table number I'm giving it. Now, it's worth stopping at that point and just making a comment about table numbers in that QPS knows nothing about the tables that you're putting in using syntax. So we've already down here got a table called Q4. So by slotting in a table here using syntax, if we gave it the same number or the same name, you would start to have problems because it would try to add those two tables together. And if they weren't the same size, you'll get an error message. So it's not a bad idea to give to give them a separate table number of your own. And in this case, I've called it 4x. And then this format option here. Now, you you're almost certainly familiar with format options when you come to specify tables using uh, QPSMR Companion. These are the same, exactly the same format options. So there's a compatibility there. So the ones that you know will work exactly the same here. And this particular format option, NAID, means don't, don't include any letters in my table numbers or table names. So although it's called 4x, it will actually output it as table 4, in which case we'll get two table 4s. So let's give that perhaps a different name. Let's call it table 110, just so that we can find it in the report in a little while. And you can see the syntax here equals dollar Q12B star dollar region. Now, you may have seen dollars popping up when you've been uh, defining some syntax with variables and so on. The same applies here, except the difference is their main data when you actually write your own syntax in here. So if you write in some syntax, Putting in Q12B without a dollar will error. Putting in region without a dollar will error. And you need that style there. It's pretty much free format, this. So spaces make no difference. This particular syntax here has got a space at either side of the asterisk. But you could have five spaces and it wouldn't make any difference at all. So in here, I put a table 110. Uh, I've got a redundant 
a format option now, but I could add other format options that you're familiar with. So maybe you know horizontal percentages. So I could add horizontal percentages to this table, and it'll give me a table which is actually the same as question, uh, sorry, table one, analyzed by region. And in fact, table one is uh, gen by gender, the same table by gender. We're now doing it by region, but we're doing it through syntax. Now, as I said, the syntax must be absolutely perfect. If you don't get it right, you will get errors. So let's run this and just have a little look and see what we've got. And out it comes. And there you can see our table 110. And it's produced a perfectly normal looking table. Underneath QPS MR Companion, it's actually running the script that MRDCL processes. So it's totally sort of compatible and actually using the same engine. And that's one of the nice things about the QPS MR Companion, that if you run a project in the Companion, you can take that script and upgrade and use it in MRDCL. Um, and it will all absolutely run perfectly well, and you can you can uh, do whatever it is you want to do in MRDCL. The difference between MRDCL and QPSMR is really about more options about available, more power, more shortcuts, and some really clever ways of building templates, which QPS just doesn't give you. QPS is a really good piece of software for setting up a questionnaire, dragging, dropping questions in a really tidy, efficient way. But if you want to start building templates, perhaps for a complex tracking study where the data changes each wave, that can be handled really well in MRDCL, whereas in QPSMR, that becomes a more cumbersome pro process for processing the data. So let's look at some other things down here. Now, you'll also see that we've got after this, we've got a standard table of them, which is Q12E by gender. And then you'll see uh, it's got insert my script or STP. So this is a way of putting some script inside a file called my script or STP and processing whatever's in that file. And if I go to the folder, you'll see I've got a file here called my script. And that's going to do some tables for me. It's going to do a table 5x. And in fact, it's just repeating the same tables over and over again. This is worth noting here, though. You'll see what it's doing is it's actually using something called a loop, which MRDCL has in it, so that you can really do repetitive instructions in very short, neat syntax. So this is saying I want seven tables here, and I want to call them A plus six, so tables seven up to 13. And I want tables Q12, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and G by region. So it's a shorthand way, if you like, of specifying something that uh, we're doing in separate lines here. So there's a really powerful language underneath the QPS in our companion. And we have a whole load of videos that can help you learn how to use that. Let's look a bit further down our list. We now see we've got myscript2.stp. And if we open that, we'll see we've got something in here in a loop one to seven, where we're now building a variable with a top two box, picking up codes one and two from each of the Q12 variables, and then adding the rest of the variables it is. So now what we're getting in these tables is Q12b, had something like very good to very poor originally, it's now adding a top two box to each of those uh, variables so that when we tabulate VQ12 by gender, we get a top two box. Now you can do that sort of thing in the companion, but the more complex that gets, the more MRDCL will benefit you. So let's look at that. And our third example here is where you start to get an idea of the sorts of things that you can do with a bit more power. So here I'm setting a data statement called parameters, and that has four parameters. It says Q12. So again, it's that rating scale we got down here, Q12. I'm telling it there's seven of them. Well, you can see that A to G. I want to analyze it by region, and I want the tables to be called 99A to G. So this is a really quick way of specifying in a in a previously named data statement, this time called parameters, the four things that you need 
to automatically generate all those seven tables, Q12A to G by region. And the way that we drive that out is by just inserting a magic piece of script that takes those four parameters and produces magically those tables. And we could reuse that add-in on any project. So it's not something we rewrite every time. We could automatically use that. And same with things like a top two box, we could build an add-in that actually added the top two box with an option maybe for a bottom two box as well. Set that up and we could use that add-in on any project and it will produce whatever I want. And this would include really complex calculations, particularly when you want to push figures straight through to Excel or PowerPoint to automate reports or feed it into an online dashboard. Those sorts of exercises or when add-ins can start to really make a difference. So let's run this once more. Let's have a little look at the output. Here it is. So that was the add-in 100, table 110 that we saw before. If we move it a bit further down, you can see we've got some tables here where we were doing some more tables through add-ins. And you can see the tables 99A to 99G, which um, have successfully produced those tables by region for the re for those things. And I think this was the one that did the top two box, if I remember rightly. Yeah, we've got a top two box in here. So we've got a summary of the top two answers. And so here, the top two box is 82, just like that. And if we wanted to add in a bottom two box, we really have, all we've got to do is amend our script in here. So let's go into that little bit of script. And we could add in here a bottom two box. So I could just say I want codes four and five, add in a piece of text that says bottom two box. Save it and just run it again. And now we should find down here. So if we look at this one, for example, let's pick a second one. Here we go, we've now got a top two box and a bottom two box. And you can see the bottom two box is 636 people, which are the sum of the 334 and 302. So it all seems to be working. So you can build up a library of add-ins that you can use on project to project, which can automatically do some really clever things for you. Now, this is probably a good point to say that the add-in principle is something that's been built into our Resolve software, there's a free version of Resolve, but there's also a premium version of Resolve where you, we supply 20 odd add-ins. And in fact, you can build your own add-ins so that they can do anything you like. But rather than having to remember to type these parameters in, it actually builds its own menu system so that you can have totally customized tables. So if you want to start looking at doing some tables very quickly through your only own custom design menus, you can export a project from QPSMR, put it into Resolve and use add-ins in Resolve to automatically do really complicated or things that are very laborious to do. So you really can save some time. And there's also a, a free version of Resolve that will let you do some secondary analysis as well from projects processed in both QPSMR companion or indeed from MRDCL, the scripting language that sits underneath uh, QPSMR companion. So that's just a sort of insight into what you can do. It's one of those topics where we could have a video that ran for hours to take you through all the things that you can do. My suggestion always in this situation is to talk to us and see if we can help you find better ways of being more productive and advising you on whether perhaps one add-in would save you a lot of time or whether perhaps you should be looking at upgrading to MRDCL to get even more productivity. Well, that would depend on your skill sets and the sort of work that you're doing. So it's hard to advise you in a video like this. We can always write add-ins for you. So I'm not particularly doing a sales pitch here, but if you want us to write add-ins for you to make something more simple, we can do that as well at a fairly small fee. So thanks for joining me on this video. I hope it's been instruction, instructional for you and you really have found something else and learned a little bit as to how far you can push QPSMR Companion to making things automated and faster. Thank you.